We're now live, Chairman. Okay, thanks very much, Lynn. Uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening, councillors, and welcome to December's Cone Area Meeting. My name is Graham Moore. I'm the councillor for Bullridge and also the chairman of this committee. Uh, welcome to one and all. Uh, do I have any apologies? Uh, no, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, just, just one bit of uh, business for you, really, just to, to remind you that the committee section staff have been under a, a huge amount of pressure trying to organise these meetings with the amount of time it takes. So it would help them if we can be brief and keep to the point and let them get home at a reasonable hour. So I'm not trying to get in the way of a, a nice democratic discussion, but if we can use one word instead of five, that would help everybody. With that in mind, I'll move on. Um, any declarations of interest? No, thank you. Public questions, I've not been notified of any questions. Minutes of last month's meeting. Could somebody approve them? Somebody, please, volunteer. Sarah, please. Second up. I'll second them, Jim. Okay, thank you. All those in favour, so I will wait the normal time. And if I hear nothing to the contrary, then that will be passed. So, Please indicate if you are not in favour of the minutes. Thank you. Moving on, progress report. Anybody, any comments or questions? Councillor Thomas? You have to unmute. You're still muted. Councillor Thomas? No? Okay. I'm assuming that you didn't want to speak and that was a, uh, an oversight. Okay. Anybody else looking? No? Happy to move on then. So police issues, welcome Matt Lunny. Uh, the floor is yours, sir, if you'd like to unmute. Can you hear me? Yeah, that's loud and clear. It's all yours. Thank you, Thank you Chair. Good evening, everybody. Um, so... The picture I'm going to paint tonight is um, it's bittersweet, I will tell you. The uh, overall crime is radically down, actually. Uh, um, I'll go through each category very quickly, uh, obviously, in relation to what you said, Chair. I'm not going to take much time, so I'll whip through. Burglars residential is down three to this time last year, which is, which is house burglars, which is very good. Commercial burglaries, which is shops, such as that, is down four. Vehicle crime remains the same as does hate crime. Um, assaults radically down by 11. I think we can probably attribute that to um, public houses being closed through the COVID um, issues. Thefts radically down by 23. Criminal damage down by six. And all crime down um, by 79, which is... Um, staggering, really. I don't remember uh, reporting such a, a low figure as that. But I said bittersweet. That's the sweet. The bitter comes in ASB, antisocial behaviour, and perhaps will not shock you that antisocial behaviour is up, and it is up radically 45 to this time last year. Now, I would certainly, as part of the neighbourhood team, attribute that again to COVID because as the uh, ep epidemic's gone on, young people, as you're probably aware, and some adults um, <clears throat> have been um, the behaviours deteriorated, should we say? And certainly on the streets, we, we've seen uh, a big increase in antisocial behaviour in relation to young people. Um, and I'd certainly put that down to the the rise in antisocial behaviour. That's the crime statistics and the crime figures. Um, and I'm happy to talk about anything else, but that that's it in relation to that. Are there any questions? In relation to the uh, the crime figures. Okay, I've got chairman. Hang on, I've got Councillor Coburn Price indicated, and then I'll go to you, Neil. Um, I mine, oh, wasn't you. mine wasn't a question; it was information. I'm quite happy for Councillor Butterworth to go first. Okay, fine, Neil. Uh, good evening, Matt. Um, yeah. It's the same same old things. I uh, reference drugs. Um, I was at the cemetery this afternoon. Um, 
uh, and uh, on my way out the cemetery, there was three or four. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm young. They weren't young. I mean, they were forty odd, but they were drinking and, and, and smoking bob up. Um, behind that little church, as you walk, as you go in, there's, there's two yeah. seats. Yeah, there's yeah. two seats there, and they are forever there. Not just them, just different people. They just seem to think they can go there, have a drink, smoke bob up, and and enjoy themselves. And it's you know, I mean, in our day, you wouldn't dream of going in a, a graveyard unless you were visiting somebody. And now it seems to be uh, basically. Um, I know dogs aren't your, uh, an issue to you, but it's now really a dog toilet and a place where they can go and drink and uh, and have some drugs. So I okay. would appreciate you could, um, you know, just when you're passing or whatever, just to pop in there, just to frighten people away, really. Uh, and just, that's it for me, Matt. Thank you. Helps. When, when that happened, sorry. This afternoon uh, at, um, I think, about five past two in the afternoon. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, yeah, I've got that. Thank you, Chair. Right. How's the man? Um. In the local press, there's a lot about um, domestic violence. Now, I know we used to do the recording of that on the sheets. Um, I'm just wondering if um, they are still being recorded. No, there's there's nothing, uh, Alex, nothing specific to domestic incidents. It's... Um, that could come under hate crime and it also could come under assault um, and obviously criminal damage. It's not broken down, I'm afraid. I can't I can't give you um, a specific uh, figure for that, I'm afraid. Would, um, would that be something that we could um, find out and have reported? Sorry, you broke up a little bit there. It did. DVs used to be on here, didn't mm, they? They did, yes. Okay, I will ask the question, Chair, no problem. DV. Yeah. Um, okay. And can I make another comment? Um, sure. Yeah. Um, we seem to be having quite a lot of problems with primit children coming home from school around about three o'clock, half past three. Um, they are playing chicken on Knott's Lane, Bridge Street, and causing rather a lot of upset, obviously, and concern. So if um, I know that at one stage there was a, a car that used to go around just at that that point in the afternoon, just to keep an eye on what's going on as the children come through. Yeah, Alex Chair, myself and PCSO Dolphin were on foot at that very time, at that very location yesterday. And obviously because we were there, it didn't happen. But thank you for that. We are aware. Thank you. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Okay, I've got uh, Councillors Foxley, not sure which one. Hi, yes. Hi, Matt. How are you doing? Hi, Brooke. Um, I just wondered if you could give any feedback on the RJ that we carried out um, at Alkincoats, Bowling Green, whether the young people turned up and did the tasks they were supposed to, etc. What a brilliant question. <laughs> Very happy to answer that. Yeah, um, the, the, um, three out of four, I believe, Margaret did turn up. Good. And they've done the time and they've worked really well. There's one one male didn't hasn't uh, turned up as yet. Um, he's been given a ch one more chance. If he doesn't turn up, then I will personally interview him and he will go down the criminal justice system because you yeah. can't. You've got, we've got to enforce that. If if part of the restorative restorative justice process. Other people have taken part of it. We can't have him not doing. So I think Elsa gives him one more. If he fails to turn up, then we'll bring him in for an interview and he'll, he'll start his criminal career now. Brilliant. Really good. Really successful. Uh, yeah, brilliant. Chairman. Okay, Neil, yeah. I'm sorry, I can't put my hand up on this no, thing. So. I saw your hand. So, um, it's just, it's I just going back. Hand. Right, okay, Dot. After, yeah, after Neil, no, you have to. Right, you go yeah, I've seen you now. Know whether you've seen it. All right. Okay, Neil. All right. Um, I'm sorry. Um, domestic violence. Uh, I mean, nobody wants it. Nobody, nobody. You know, it, it, it's wrong. So wrong. But the idea before was when I first joined, 
is when you put domestic violence uh, 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 as a criminal offence, it, it really shadowed the wards. So, like, uh, just, I'll just take my ward, for instance. Uh, at one point, there was, um, uh, it was a, a 11 assaults, but they weren't assaults as such. They were domestic violence. Uh, and if people are looking at buying a house in Waterside or uh, or anywhere, Bolsworth, anywhere, it, when you see these assaults and they're not defined, um, it, it, yeah, it put them off. I, you know, I had one person ask me, uh, you know, what's it like in Water, in Orsfield? And I said, it's okay. You know, it's in different parts, have different issues. But he said, what's all this violence about? Uh, so therefore, um, you know, we, we actually changed the um, the town centre before it was either Rossfield or Waterside, now there's a, an actual area called the centre, and that's where some of the assaults are taken in the centre of the town, not in Waterside or Rossfield. So we have to be careful. This domestic violence that we don't want uh, doesn't put people off coming to town or you know or, or be living in town. I think that was an issue. That's why I think we um I think we took them off. I'm not sure, but it's just an insight. Thank you. Okay. Hi, Doc. Yeah. Um, just to um, follow up what Neil said, we this committee actually asked for them, <coughs> the domestic violence uh, assaults, to be put on. Uh, so I don't know where they've gone. Um, I was going to ask Matt, it's a bit of a broad question, but um, when Matt says, and, and we all agree with this, um, that the behaviour of the youth has deteriorated. Do the police have any thoughts on why this is? I know there'll be lots of reasons, but, um, I, I, you know, and we all have our own thoughts. I just wonder what the police thought. I think, yeah, I mean, this is not necessarily the opinions of Lancashire Constabulary, although I do represent them tonight. I think um, there's obviously issues at school. Schools are being run very differently and are much tighter the way that they're dealing with, with groups. So there's much more control there. So there's freedom isn't there for, for young people to to um, wander around and such like that. I think obviously issues at home and issues out on the street. Um, I mean, my wife the other day is on the way home and she gets mud chucked at her on Windy Bank and had to swerve. I mean, it's happening to, to many people. And I, in my experience, this is the worst behaviour in terms of AFP I've seen for a long time, I'll be honest. But I, th I, I would say, Dorothy, your question is really relevant and it's one I could do, write an essay on probably and do research. But I definitely would put it down to COVID and I think it's got a massive, massive thing to do with it. Uh, <laughs> Okay, Matt, you are here. So. If you can hear me, you can hear me. Okay. I got it. Did you get the black dot, or do you want him to do it? I'm really here. Okay. I've now got a hand, hand up. So if you want to I'll, I'll come to you now. All right. Mike, can you hear You're muted, Sarah. Sorry. Sorry. I was waiting for the feedback to stop. Um, Dorothy, just to sort of come on to uh, what you just asked Matt, um, Margaret and I asked that when we went to Park <coughs> High, and the deputy head there said they'd noticed a real difference and put that down to all the uh, sort of repression of the first lockdown and the uncertainty of not having their normal lives, nothing being the same, and a sort of release valve and outlet. But they had they said that they'd never seen anything like it. Um, just wanted to share with the other councillors and uh, also update Matt. I know that he has been really involved, and so has his colleague Dave Cleal, um, in the Cone Youth Action Group. Very kindly, the police gave us the profits from their tuck shop this week, 
as a, as a starting slush fund for our bank account, um, we applied for charitable CIO foundation status on Sunday. And there was a, a stern bit that said, don't expect to hear from us for two months. Do not call. Do not email. It won't happen. There's a backlog because of COVID. On Wednesday, we got um, some alterations. We put Jer Jerry Stanford is one of our trustees. And they pointed out that he was really called Jeremy. Uh, changed a few things. And today we got our accreditation with the charitable number. So we've made contact with Primit, with Fishermore. Um, we've started getting more and more letters, including from the police, including from Councillor Iqbal at uh, Pendle Council, talking about how the antisocial behaviour has affected parks, for example, in different parts of the town. Um, I have contacted the Cone Bid. We've started getting letters from businesses talking about how vandalism has affected their business and how they would support this program. So next month, I'd be most grateful if Lynn, because I was waiting, I was worried that the charitable thing would take a long time. But next month, I'd be very grateful if Lynn could formally put this on the agenda and I will write to her with all the details and a paper um, and then that way, it, you know, everybody can be informed about it. I would obviously hope to make a bid to this committee for some funding, because one of the things that we're very much hoping to do, and we've started the ball rolling, is a community asset transfer from LCC um, for the building that's opposite Empress Mill on Byron Road. Um, and I have the, yesterday spoken to the headmistress of Park Primary, whose land is leased around it, and she is very supportive of the aims. So the idea is the whole thing is joined up, working with the police, working with businesses, various youth groups, positive action in the community and the schools. Um, it wouldn't just be based there anyway. There would be after school clubs and various other things. But hopefully we can bring that all together and perhaps tackle, not completely, but make a start on bringing down the uh, antisocial behaviour that we've all noticed wherever our wards are. So I hope that that little update is is useful. Thank, thank you, Sarah. I would say that is an excellent bit of work, Sarah. Well done. Thanks for that, Sarah. Thank the other you. Thing I, would, I would just consult with David. You'll need it to be a capital bid for us to release the funds. So that that might might help you. Well, that's true. I mean, obviously, if we got the building, which I would imagine would be in the future, then I could write a capital bid for an oven or guttering or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. But I have noticed looking at Councillor Butterworth with a smile. Um, he has some revenue funds, for example. Um, so I am hopeful that non-capital, because I sort of need, LCC have come back to me and said that I need cash to, to, to prove financial wherewithal. But now we have got the charity number and everything, I will crack on with uh, applying for grants like the Crime Commissioner funds and things like that. I was waiting until we got the formal paperwork, which has come so much sooner than we expected. Good. OK, Sarah, that's absolutely great. Thanks for that. If nobody else, I'll move on to planning. Good. Nice to hear it. So planning application 0917. Um, anybody wish to comment? It's down. Yeah, Councillor Butterworth. Bye, Matt. Thanks very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Councillors. Thank you, yeah. Chair. Good night. You're always welcome. Very nice, man. Thank you. Okay, planning application 0917. Councillor Greaves. Councillor Greaves, you wish to speak? Yeah. yeah. No, you. That's it. You're okay now. No, for some reason, my computer here is uh, not working very well. Um, it's just had a. Com it's had one of these uh, sort of Microsoft rehab things, and uh, as a result, things are going wrong. However, um, um, and I apologise for joining this meeting late. 
which was uh, uh, a result of uh, somebody putting me in a little meeting on my own, um, in a, locking me up in a little room on my own. I couldn't get out and I couldn't talk to anybody. Well, so well, the, well, the well, 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 one thing you didn't hear, because you weren't here at the beginning of the meeting, I'm very glad you've been able to join us, was I just brought to everybody's attention how much extra work the committee sessions had to do with these sort of meetings and how we were going to try and be a little brief tonight, uh, not, not treading on your democratic rights, but use one word instead of five is what we, uh, we, we thought. So that's the bit you missed. So the floor is yours. And, uh, yes, I wish you the best of luck. Yeah, um, I try. Okay. Um, this, I think it's very unfortunate this, this, this application has come to the committee as it has. Um, in a sense, it's come out of the blue. Um, the planning application went in almost a year ago, um, almost exactly a year ago, and it's been sort of uh, rustling around the undergrowth since then. And to be quite frank, some of us thought it had disappeared uh, because it had been so long. Um, however, we are where we are, um, and in particular, I find that uh, the, of the people who live around and across from it, nobody had the slightest idea it was coming here this evening, um, and by the time I got around to telling some of them, uh, it was rather late, and then. Uh, I hold my hand up there. These are difficult times for everybody. Chair, not least the committee staff, who I think are doing a wonderful job. Um, the most amazing thing about the report, which we have in front of us, and I've checked this on the website, and it seems to be true, uh, is that not a single resident made any comment on it when they were first sent a letter, which was, I think, the 17th of January this year. Um, and again, people thought it had just gone away. Um, so I think the, the whole consultation thing has fallen apart. One or two people have told me that the ones I've managed to contact today have said, well, they'd forgotten about it. And um, at the time it went out, um, they were really trying to get more information and so on and haven't had any. I think that this application taken as a whole is a disaster for residents. And I think it's a disaster for the future of the valley here. And in many ways, the reason that I say that um, is that we've had it all before. We've had industrial premises in that area um, at Spring Gardens Mill, although half the mill has not been used for a very long time before it was pulled down, but half of it was. And certainly in what was the riverside, I think they were called the riverside sheds, in the meander of the river, the bend of the river, and the weaving sheds behind were occupied. And the access by industrial vehicles was a disaster, a shambles, for year after year after year. And I'm not not suggesting it was entirely due to this site. Some of it wasn't. Some of it was due to um, premises which were accessed over the little bridge further along. Um, and some of the worst traffic actually went that way. Nevertheless, um, the manoeuvring of vehicles, the fact that vehicles were trying to go along totally unsuitable roads, it's not clear to me... Um, perhaps because I haven't read the report properly, perhaps because I haven't read the recommendations properly, um, where the access is proposed. The original access was proposed to be a long green road. Has that been changed now to Bridge Street and Shore Road? I don't see Mr. anybody. 
Mr. Will, do you, do you want to? Do you want to chip in at any time you feel it would help? Uh, Chairman, uh, it isn't uh, changed as such in, in the sense of you can't prevent vehicles going where they, they wish to go up on, on public highways. But Chairman, uh, Shaw Street clearly is the preferred route from the County Council in terms of geometry and width of roads, etc. Okay. We've been through all this before. There used actually to be a, a sign on what used to be the old Your Rhino at the bottom of Knotts Lane, or on the corner of Knotts Lane, should I say, um, which is long gone. Uh, and the sign's gone recently because I finally got it removed, saying Lear Corporation, and they're a company that haven't been there for a very long time, telling their vehicles to go along Knotts Lane, the flat part, Knotts Lane bottom, and then turn left up Bridge Street, and then turn right on to Shaw Street or Shaw Road, and then turn right again to get into the site. Did it do much good? The answer is no. Um, a lot of the vehicles continued um, in order to access the entrance, which is going to be used now, continued to, to use Green Road. And this was at a time when there wasn't as much traffic, there weren't as many cars parked on Green Road, um, not as many people there had cars. Now almost everybody has a car, and Green Road is an absolutely hopeless access to a major or main industrial site. So um, if it can't be changed, oh, sorry, my computer is about to restart. I will see if I can snooze it and stop that happening. Um, if it goes off, I'll just have to come back as soon as I can. Um, even so, we're talking about, let's just take it from the motorway, which is where we'd expect the traffic to come. Burnley Road. Well, we all know what Burnley Road is like. It is jammed up for a considerable part of the week, particularly on... Uh, afternoons and early evenings and in the morning when kids are going to school partly because the North Valley's jammed up and people go along White Walls Drive and Burnley Road and up through town instead and also because there are three or four schools along there which jam up the road at school beginnings openings and when the schools are losing in the afternoon and the fact is putting a significant amount, we don't know how much, because we don't know what's going to be in these units. Um, and I say units because I think we've got to look at this site as a whole and not just at the red line site at the moment, which in my view is an act of clear deceit on behalf of the applicants because they, they're not hiding the fact that they are intending to develop the whole site and have further stages, they're just uh, applying for permission in order to make it easier to get planning permission. And then the next one will come along, and then the next one, and then the next one after that, and it'll be all jam full. We don't know what's going to be on it, and uh, we're going to have less control over what's on it when the government's new regulations come in, when the new planning system comes in, because we've already had the report to say that the industrial categories are all going to be, a lot of them, amalgamated together with shopping categories. We could have shops on there. We could have big, big stores there. And we would not be able to do anything about it if the new government rules go through. Um, OK, we've got to deal with this under present rules, but this is what is happening in the future. So go back to the traffic. Green Road is unsuitable. Totally unsuitable. Um, the traffic coming along Burnley Road then has to turn right into the bottom part of Knotts Lane, the flat part. That is already a congested junction. All the traffic use it to rat run up along through along Shore Road and up into the town centre when the when the traffic is is blocked up. And for the county to say that the access is perfectly okay, these are the, comments made by county council officers who sit on their bums 
on their seats in County Hall or wherever they sit and look at maps. They say that it's easily walkable from this site to Cone Town Centre. They're not looking at the contours. A lot of the population find it impossible to do that walk. They've got to use transport. They say it's near to public to, to main road public transport. It depends what you mean by near and how hard it is to, to, to get to it and from it. Um, it the, the, the county council, as usual, the report on it is a load of rubbish. So you go along Notts Lane Bottom, off Burnley Road, into Notts Lane Bottom. That's a bad junction. It's going to have slight improvement uh, due to the persimmon development, but that hasn't happened yet. And it's not going to make very much difference, frankly. And then it's got to turn left into Bridge Street, which is possible, but not wonderful. Then it has to turn right into Shaw Street, another right angle bend. And we're talking about industrial traffic, articulated lorries. We don't know, but we assume 40 foot or whatever. Uh, the sort of traffic we used to have, it was a disaster. When it stopped, it was wonderful. And this is going to bring it all back again. Then it has to turn right back into, and that junction's not too bad, back into Spring Gardens. Then it has to turn left into the site, and that left junction into the site is not a good one. And I have to say that when our ticks were going into that, and it's going to be improved a little bit, but not much, when our ticks used to use that in the past, there was a lot of shunting forward, shunt reversing backwards, getting itself into position and getting itself in. And the ones coming out, frankly, instead of turning right and doing that acute angle turn again and across the Spring Gardens Bridge, simply went straight on and, and, and went through Green Road. And if we can't stop it, then I think that's a reason for turning it down. So I would turn it down on traffic grounds. Um, I also, it is not a suitable place for a modern industrial estate. And I say that taking the whole development as a whole, not just the first phase, which is this building that we've got. But we've got this building in front of us. I don't know if there's a picture of it uh, that uh, Mr. Watson can show people. All I can say is, with its facing of some sort of um, cladding and red brick, it is horrible. It's just a great industrial, horrible industrial shed. Now, it will be visible right across the valley. I think we're going to get it now. Isn't it wonderful? Um, we, that is going to be visible right across the valley from everybody who lives on the north side of the South Valley. All those streets, everybody looks out on the South Valley all the time. We used to look out on that great big, uh, rather wonderful great big mill that used to be there. We'll now see this horrible, deplorable, shabby industrial building. Plus, I'm not sure how many of us, because we don't have the planning permission. They, they're showing indicative Three more, including a much bigger one behind it, and uh, another one uh, in the bend of the river, which will be even nearer. So I think that the design of this is horrible. This is a valley which is built of local sandstone and gritstone. And I think if we're going to have industrial buildings in that valley, they should be faced in stone. At least then they would have a nod, they would give a nod, um, they would give a nod to, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I am, uh, uh, I'm, I'm having to click again to prevent, um, Um, the, the powers that be here closing the computer down. I hope I've done that. Um, so I think the design is horrible. So I think we can turn it down on design, on design grounds. I see very little indication in this application of any landscaping. Is there what, what's going to happen to the blank areas 
which are not to be developed in the first phase, which is most of the site? Is it going to remain as a stony, weed-infested wilderness, or are we going to have some temporary landscaping? There's nothing there, and I would not vote for this until we get some, at least some, uh, and, and get some indication of what the final landscaping site for this. I think they're jamming too many buildings on this site for it to be reasonable. I think that the, 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 the built-up area is is going to have to, I think I've been zapped. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can still hear you. You can, okay. Yeah. Something happened then and I thought I was being zapped. But no, I, I, keep the, I, I keep getting these little messages coming up and I think they're coming from this end, but who knows. And then there's the flooding. I think that at the very least, we as a committee should be satisfied and not just delegate this. And at the very least, therefore, I think it should be deferred until the next meeting, until we've got an absolutely clear explanation to us as councillors, not to Mr. Watson, excellent officer though he is. I think on something as important as that, we should have the report to us as councillors. Therefore, on the grounds of the flooding, the access roads, the design of the the horrible design of the building, um, and uh, the fact that we have nothing at all about any sensible landscaping. I mean, just think if there is going to be um, an estate here which is full of industrial buildings and perhaps some supermarkets and who knows what in the future, at the very least we should be insisting that there are hundreds and hundreds of trees planted and some decent landscaping to hide the buildings and to contribute towards our climate emergency work in planting trees. And I therefore, um, well, initially I will move that it is turned down for the reasons I've said, but I'm aware that we're waiting for the landscape and if somebody wanted to move the amendment to defer it to the next meeting, and at the very least, I and my colleagues could then at least go and talk to the residents and see what they really think about it, which I hold my hand up. I have not done, should have done. And it's just got lost during this horrible summer that we've had. So I apologize to the committee for that. I would normally, we would normally have done that, but we haven't done it. It's come in a hurry. And for all those reasons, at the very least, I think it should be deferred. Uh, initially, I will move that it's turned down. Okay. okay. I would like to agree with absolutely everything that uh, Councillor Greaves has said and add a further one, which is that it says that the old engine house isn't a heritage asset. It actually is listed in the list on the neighbourhood plan. Um, now, admittedly, we're only regulation 14, but we expect and hope to reach Regulation 16 on the 20th of February. Um, it is a wonderful building if you've not looked at it. The setting of it, I agree, is suboptimal. As, as um, Councillor Grieve says, it sits in this sea of bricks and gravel. But honestly, look at the detailing on the building. It is gorgeous. Uh, and we, we knock things like that down at our peril. We really do. Um, so I'm very happy to, to second his uh, motion on that. Thank you. So you, you've taken the motion for refusal, yeah? I'm I'm slightly un, I'm slightly unclear. I thought we were deferring. Right. Okay. Well, it, Councillor Greaves actually proposed uh, refusal, but he, he indicated he was happy to accept referral. So, okay. Councillor Greaves, would you change your motion to referral? If there is a consensus tonight to defer, and then between us we can perhaps all get our act together a bit better on this development, I would be happy with that. In that case, it's possibly uh, more sensible, isn't it? Because it's wrong for somebody's uh, application to be dismissed without all, all, all the information being available to everybody. So perhaps deferral is, is better. Everybody agree with that? Mr. Watson, do you wish to speak at this time or, or not? Uh, Chairman, I was, I was just going to say, I didn't know which motion was on the table, but if, if the motion stood uh, for refusal, then I will.
Um, thank you, Chair. Um, just looking at the uh, proposals that in the design and access statement, it talks about landscaping, um, but the landscaping it talks about is just um, a very uh, minimal amount of low level planting. So that wouldn't have any um, benefit in terms of the, the, the desire to um, screen the development in any way, shape, or form. Can, can I suggest that um, the, uh, the the detail is provided on because um, I don't think, seem to see any detail as to what that planting or that those proposals are, but that um, we have um, detail on on what the landscaping proposed is. Okay, uh, I'm seeing, Mr. Watson seems to be making notes. So, is that okay, Mr. Watson? We can ask for that. Chairman, there, there is, uh, as Councillor Foxy points out, there's a small amount of landscaping shown on there. But, Chairman, uh, we would normally cover it by a condition which we ha have recommended. But, uh, Chairman, if you, if committees minded to defer uh, till next month, then we can go back to the uh, agents, applicants, and and ask for some details. And then all the flooding uh, work should be completed by then, so we'd have that before us as well. Through you, Chairman, we're in the hands of the agencies, but I can't guarantee because obviously yeah. we're in the hands of those agencies. Okay. So, uh, okay, then, councillors, if you're happy, then uh, we have a proposal that's been seconded for deferral to the next meeting. So, I will assume everybody is in favour. If not, please indicate to the contrary. Okay, so I'm going to say that, that that was unanimous, so that has been deferred for one month. Thank you very much. Um, the next planning application is not before us. That has been withdrawn. So we're then on to planning appeals. If anybody has any queries or questions. Please check your microphones, please. I can hear a lot of rustling of papers. Thank you. Enforcements and unauthorised uses. Any questions, comments? Councillor Greaves. No, you're muted. Councillor, you're still muted. That's okay, it. yes, I know. Yeah, it, it, it's taking about five seconds to do anything, this hopeless machine. Right. Um, I shall complain to Black Rod about it. Right, the the um, Langroyd, Langroyd, I think, is on this, isn't it? Have we got an up-to-date date of uh, um, assessment of how it's going? Mr. Watson. Sorry, Chairman, I'm, I, I'm trying to uh, unmute as well. Uh, Chairman, uh, there were discussions with uh, Mrs. Mr. Lyons uh, last week. Uh, or the, towards the end of the week before about timber work and uh, the issues, what could and couldn't be retained in terms of 